Yo, 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 first smoke of the day. Damn, this is a big one right here. Celebration night. We saw this last night. What is it? Episode 10. Big wins too, man. Big wins. Here hosting right here is Pat Gods. I'm here with my co-host Blackleaf in the What up? What up, big dog? Good (laughs) man. What'd you think last night? I can't see over these trophies. Two big dog trophies in the building, man. <laughs> I'm trying to see special our guests. guests here. Yeah. Holy shit, man. Special guests in the building. Grow low key in the building. What's yeah. popping, bro? Oh, man. Man, I appreciate you guys having me out here, man. It's just huge, bro. Huge night last night. Big for the team. Big for the brand. Big for Green Wolf. Just even me putting on the list, bro. Underdog came out on top one time. Awesome, man. Man. Fire flower, funky, real different. Heavy fog, man. I mean, and, and there's a couple different phenos I'm seeing sitting on the table here. We're we're seeing some really funky stuff, man. Different from what I've seen from any other brands. I really appreciate it, bro. It's just one thing I focused on early on was trying to keep a lot of things in house, doing a lot of my own projects, and trying to show up to events and sessions with something different than everybody else. What made you choose the peanut butter gelato that I see? Like, because that one just stands out. So, like, I mean, that thing is just so different. So the PBG, when I first found it, man, I just knew it was something special. I knew the name was super marketable. Coming to market after I dropped the peanut butter breath, you know, I was one of the first people in the state to get that to market. Yeah. That was in the uh, Santa Rosa Cup. So after that, I kind of knew I had the peanut butter wave going. Once I, <laughs> once I found that, I was like, shit, let's run it. I like uh, that. Throw the peanut butter wave. Where, 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 like did, where did you drop that one at? I had that at the Santa Rosa High Times Cup. It was one of the last cups they did in... Uh, Man, I think we, went, I feel, uh, yeah, right. I feel like we might have even had some of that. We were definitely there. We had the PB souffle. I, it was a super small drop, bro. I had a little fucking jar um, and dude, I sold out. Yeah. And that's when I knew it was, it was actually Dub Gardens Fino. So Dubs shot me that peanut butter breath Fino. That was from Thug Pug. Um, I was working with Thug Pug for a long time at that point. Yeah. So then I got to work. We worked that for a little while and then i found the pbg actually with my boy surefire uh, oh yeah big breeder yeah, surefire so, genetics uh surefire he's a good guy we went out we grabbed that we got it to market we kind of had a different vision at the time with the directions we were going i took it and ran with it and he kind of did his own thing and took his own lane that's really when me and north bay started grinding bro damn put him on the team put him in a spot Got him right to work. You know, we just started making plays. Um, <laughs> I like that. That's what I it's saw about. Surefire making some good plays with Trike in the rosin industry. Yeah. You know, in um, he was doing a lot with the GMO. Trikedelics yes, you're talking about. Yeah, man. Big shout out. If anyone hasn't seen his stuff. I mean, I, I used to I fresh press a lot, right? Doesn't he do fresh press? I used to see some crazy fresh press. And then your guys' collabs would always be standouts. I would, I would have to stop like it. And then I'm reading. I'm like, oh, yeah, grow low key again. Here he is. What, dude, when you first saw the PB, the peanut butter, you knew it was something. You were like, this is it. I knew it was something for dry flour, bro. Okay. I wasn't into the rosin yet. Okay. Right? Okay. Just transitioning for me. I was talking with Surefire and we were going over some numbers and I didn't understand that you could freeze flour and make somewhat similar what you can back for a dry pack. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? So it was just something new to me, bro. Um, as the extraction progressed, you learn things you, know? you do. And, and I'm sure having a relationship with trike is like, you got that right hand seat to see like, Oh, this one's yielding. This one's not, we need to do this. Oh, the, look how this is coming out. You well, know, at first it was brand new for me. So that's where the PBG was. Uh, I was like, okay, so it makes sense. Let's freeze this batch. I want to do it. I was told to do a small test batch, bro. So I'm sitting there, I'm being hella tedious, chopping off the uh, leaves, you know, yeah, not touching the flower at all, preserving the trichomes as much as possible. And I'm sitting there for a couple of hours, bro. And I'm not even at the mark I'm supposed to be at yet. And I'm like, this is not working for me, bro. <laughs> and I was on the PBG. So I finally got to that mark where I needed to be for one strain. I had four strains in the room. I brought the PBG over. We tested that. And trike was just blown away, bro. Like, oh, this is one of the best strains I've ever worked with. Some of the best hash I've ever made. Just Damn. the turp alone. You got a gelato that washes. Damn. Shit. Okay, bro. Rare. We'll chop the whole room. This rosin game's easy. And that's when I learned the hard way. Uh, <laughs> Another probably, lesson. That's all. Almost- you should probably test things before you go all in. Yeah. Because I got my GB6 that gave me like 0.5%. Oh, we took a little hell on that shit. one. 
And GB6 is what exactly? So GB6 is the Gorilla Breath. That's the Mendo Breath with the Gorilla Glue. Again, made by Thug Pug. Um, wow. I have a buddy that I linked up with early on out of Fresno. Those are 559. And he was hoarding seeds, bro. Like this man had a lot of seeds and he had a very close relationship with Gromer at the time. Oh, big time Thug and, Pug. Um, so Gromer was shooting out testers all the time. This was before Gromer was really Thug Pug. You know, they just had a really close relationship. So I got to test so much stuff through that relationship as we were building the wave. And the tricks came in a batch like that. The GB6, I got it as Gorilla Breath. It was a number six Fino. I gave it to another buddy of mine. And at the time he was like, yo, this tastes like Trix yogurt, bro. Yeah. So I was like, all right, we're just going to run it with the Trix name and be a little different here. I and love that it. That was at the time where people were still really starting to make their own lanes with strains and things, you know? So since I hunted it, since I found it, it's mine. I name it what I want to name it. Um, yeah. That's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of where straight the game up, started with that, you know? I like it. That was actually the first time I ever had your product. It made its way down to LA, that, that CB Tricks or yeah, C. Well, six G, yeah. And just the name, it stutter tongued me to where I was like, what is this? And, yeah. I, and then trichedelics i mean his coloration the uh he does that pattern uh the it's not like the mandala but it's uh what is it ge the positive geometry or whatever yeah and i don't know what it's called but i know it's that sacred thing. geometry and uh it's so dope his product just and he does fresh press which at the time you were seeing a lot of um rosin that was basically not fresh press that was cold cure and his looked just like honey it looks like honey inside of a jar Damn. Yeah, it's uh, unbelievable. It something different, bro. It is. And then um and your you know, flavor's different. That's what it was. Working with Trike did so much for the brand, bro. And then I seen Valley Grove doing a couple collabs and you know, he was doing some things with West Coast at the time and you know, Valley Grove's from my city, bro. There's a handful of people from my city with some pop brands. Shout out Valley Grove. Oh, Hell up. yeah. So, so rep the, we'll get back to that too. Rep, rep the city where you're Petaluma, where you, California. Okay. Petaluma. It's about 30 miles north of San Francisco. Super small, but there's some big dogs that have came out pretty, of there, bro. Straight up. So pretty much consider Bay Area. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. If you got a waterway in your city that leads you straight to the Bay in a boat, bro, you're from the Bay. Straight up. <laughs> I like straight that. Up, I like that. Yeah. I never knew that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nah, Petaluma. Shout out Petaluma. Let's go. I like small towns with badass growers. I'm about uh, that. Once I started chopping it with Valley Grove, you know, and seeing the market, it was time to do a play with West Coast, bro. You know, so we took the PBG over there and did a major play and never looked back. He's got a main stage, West oh, Coast yeah. Alchemy, man. So He's, now I get whew. the best of both worlds. I get fresh press from one of the best producers that ever does fresh press. And then I get to go over there to West Coast and get a cold cure. That's just beautiful. Oh, man. Yeah, that's crazy. And two different markets. Big time. Very smart moves, bro. I'm going to be honest. I see that path that you just laid out in front of us. And to say like big ups to how you already grow fire flower. We obviously know that. And instead of taking that and saying, well, I'm, you know, I'm grow low key and I grow fire flower. You took the back seat, let a guy rosin all your stuff, which actually puts you in play to now be where you're at now. Like smart moves, bro. Oh, well, I appreciate it, bro. You know how long it took me to get there and how many bad extraction deals it took me to get there to where for about two and a half years, I just sat stagnant and just pumping flour. And I just let trim sit around. I didn't want to deal oh, with people. Uh, I didn't even want to take a chance, bro. You get burned a couple of times and you're doing something good. You're just like, fuck these guys. You, you know? want yeah. it safe and secure 100%. and easy. Yeah. So once I started seeing how these two guys move, bro, they're some of the best business guys that I've ever worked with. Wow. Okay. Yeah, man. And, and that's hard to find in the extra game. Cause Rare. I are like coming through. It's, it's like kind of, it's hard to find good creatives. Yeah, feel like in life and like those are the types of people that do that so for them to be on their business too shout out to them because that's not easy it's very hard to find good extractors that not alone just make good product but are actually good people in business yeah it's very rare i mean long i can't tell times. you how many times we've been burned long that, wait times that care so much about their quality that will look you in the eye and be like bro we ain't packaging this batch it's not good enough yes yeah, you gotta deal with that because when you chop it and you're taking the risk and you know what I mean? Like I got rooms that are mine, bro, but we also have rooms that a couple of my buddies take care of, but maybe they're not giving the plan as much love as I would that run. You you're know right. What I mean? So you're when right. you go and up. chop a harvest, it's somewhat of a gamble to go do a wash and then you get back 0.75% less than you did on the last run. But bro, when you're talking rosin, that's a big difference. Huge. I mean, points matter. Yeah. Tiny points matter it's with rosin, especially when you're taking your whole crop, which you, 
it's all inputs and money. And you're saying, well, let's see how it goes and let's leave it in someone else's hands. Especially at the prices flowers getting these days. And for his flower, his flower is fire, bro. bro. Yeah. Phenomenal. You know, hunting, man. I put a lot of work into that early on. I saw that that was the only thing that was going to keep me different from everyone else. You know, if I'm going there getting all the cuts that everybody else could get, I mark a shot. Get something that nobody else has and you can control your own market. Anywhere you go, you can control your own market. And that's got me to so many meetings, so many positions now that I got so many doors open. And shout out to Green Wolf, man. We're about to make Green Wolf home out here in L.A. Wow, that's dope. Shout out to Green Wolf, one of the best events. Bringing me on to this event was huge, bro. Just the exposure alone. I had no idea what to expect. Uh, you know, I got a message. It was just like, we're putting together this, uh, this Olympics. You know, there's 16 top brands in the state. We want to bring you on board, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I saw the date. I'm like, shit, this thing's in less than a month. Yeah, you're like, where are we at with oh, props? Shit. You know, That's you know? How they, so I was like, and you know, I don't know I was what everybody that. else got. I'm just happy to be here, bro. So <laughs> Straight up. I wasn't even stressing. I'm like, okay, boom. What's coming down in the next week or what's already in the drying room right now? Yes. So I got super lucky, bro. I just finished a pheno hunt four months earlier to select three or four phenos to put on tables. And we were just finishing that up. And uh, we had a double scoop coming down. I had my uh, GB6 times 41 Sherb coming down. Oh. And I had this uh, peanut butter tricks, the pure frost pheno times the 41 Sherb coming down. That's what I ended up calling heavy fog. I actually had two phenos of that. There was a number one and a number four. So once everything was done, you know, I'm, I'm looking around and me and North Bay are sitting around the table and we're just chopping it up. Like, shit, what, what, what can we put in this thing? And we smoked a double scoop, bro. And I was like, it's fire. You know, it's flavorful. Mm-hmm. But I see all the big dogs that are in this with us. And to be honest, uh, a lot of them have the same turp profile. And, trying to show up with something a little different here. So uh, I like that. I rolled up uh, the GB6 41 Sherb and it was smoking, bro, but I, I won't run it again. Just set that one to the side. You know, there's better stuff. And then I found the heavy fog number four, bro. And the second I inhaled that number four, again, all I had was those to choose from. I knew it was the one. I was like, all right, we're going to run this. I know it's slightly different. We're going to show up to the party with this one, bro. And, Smoking around. Right it now. happened. Yeah. Nice bat going around. It's right very amazing. different, bro. It is funky. It is gassy. It is sweet. It is funky. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go back enough to where we had smoked 16 different flavors through the thing and it stood out to me. You know, it really did. It was so funky that I immediately was like, what is this heavy fog? And the whole thing, I like the the branding. I like the name. I like the funkiness. And not to to go down on anything. We were smoking a lot of runts variants, right? A lot of Z41, a lot of, which is some of my favorite Terps, but to have a palate changer of that magnitude and something that was like, whoa, whoa. What's this? Yes. Yeah. It stopped us in our tracks. And I immediately was like, you can't put your one finger on it either. Like, what is bro, it? To get first place, most potent, first place, most gassy, bro. I was blown away. Best I, trophies. Holy fuck. I was Straight just up. stoked to be there, bro. You no, I could no tell the idea. whole, like I, we could tell the whole crew. I was crew. sitting there with my team. We brought the whole team out, bro. They were showing mad support, you know, it ain't cheap getting 16 people down to LA, bro. Fuck no. You it's know not. what I mean? So we showed up, we showed out and I started getting random DMs, bro. Like people that never followed me before were just like, bro, you got something special in this box. And that's when it started kind of like giving me a kick of like, all right, low key, you, you might got <laughs> something here, bro, because I'm just not used to that shit, bro. Yeah. You know, I'm so laid back. You know, I started so young. I went through so much shit so young, bro. By the time I was fucking 18, it was medical card and take shit to the club, bro. The street shit was done. You know, I caught a huge case in 06, bro. Ugh. You know, I started smoking in 2000. I was 12 years old, just graduated sixth grade, going into seventh grade. That's what it was. I had an older brother, bro. So I was always around it. You know, having an older brother that's three years older than you, you know, like, see shit. So that's what it was. I started smoking, bro, and uh, 06 came around, and, you know, you get slapped with the sales charge. 
Yeah. I was moving the fucking pot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You feel me? So uh, that's older brother was, loved bro. you. <laughs> he was showing you some love. That's what it was, bro. And I just took it to a whole nother level at that stage. You know, luckily I got wrapped up as a juvenile and then piss tests, all that nonsense. Oh, yeah. I was on yeah. papers for a long time, bro. But see, I was the one that was on papers and I was like, oh, shit, I still selling weed, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, fuck it. Life's you know? life. Yeah. So, but when 06 came around, bro, a lot of things changed in my life. And I will say that's when. The low key lifestyle started. Uh, I wasn't low key I yet, like but that. that's when the lifestyle started. Makes sense now. Um, so yeah, I just graduated high school in 07 and then 18, got my card, got to work. And then it was, uh, it was Mercy and Katati. I showed up there with a couple of my first runs and they just ate it up, bro. So I was like, all right, we're just going to chop down and go straight to Mercy. You know, so it was just easy. And there was no branding at that point. There really wasn't, you know, we're talking like 2011, 12, 13, those days, right? That's Crucial. when Instagram started kind of popping off. Yeah, what, strains? what strains were you taking there? Bro, I found this strain. It was from Gage Green at the time. It okay. was their uh, Grape Stomper Sour Grapes. And it was from the Blue Sky Cafe in Oakland. They had that. Um, they were pretty popular from some, for some decent genetics back then. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's really to me, no, no shame to their game, but Gage Green's kind of claim of fame that kind of got slept on. Yeah, they're know, the OGs. They're OGs they in the game. did the collab with uh, NorCal. And to be honest, in my eyes, that carried their brand to where it's at now. If yeah. they didn't do that collab and make the Mendo breath and get that notoriety, again, not knocking them, but you got to give credit where credit is due. Yeah. That boy had the name in the game at the time. That boy made that way with the dosi dos and the mendo, bro. You know, so that's really where it happened out of the bay. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the mendo breath is famous. I mean, and then what was the other one? Were they doing OGKB? Was that theirs as well? Or yeah, no? so he had the OGKB. He did that with Archive, made the dosi dos. Wow. Yeah, fire, bro. I want to say that's what happened, man. That's that. And so you were from the very beginning. That's some funky stuff, bro. That's dope. And so you, you're from the Bay and that's where you started. And that's where you put basically been your whole life. Yeah. So it was like 2012, 13, you know, Instagram started popping off right there in the Bay, bro. And people were telling me, oh, start your brand, start pumping. You're already dropping at the clubs, bro. Like do something. Oh, so you had good homies around you that early. Oh yeah, bro. You know, like. I kept the circle pretty close. You know? Really, all the pioneers came up out of there. Yeah, big I mean, time. The so first I, medical shop we've seen. I'm seeing it. And again, there. 06 is still in my mind, bro. I'm not trying to go on Front Street yet. Straight up. You know, like, you're telling me to go on Instagram and start posting flowers? Like, yeah. Who, who's doing that? And they wanted the best for you, though. And they were trying to put you on. Yeah, like, bro, you're an OG. Sure. You be an original. Yeah, that's dope. So Damn. then what happened, I had a couple of buddies that uh, we had a nice little grow together. And, oh, they were just so hot. like. Nothing like low key, bro. And that's when it started <laughs> clicking to me. I'm seeing how they're working and I'm like, why can't y'all just grow low key? And I'm like, oh shit. I literally opened Instagram, bro, and wrote in grow low key. And I started my brand. I like I it. Dope. That's, that's how dope. it happened, bro. So then I was like, oh, grow low key, low key farms. We'll run Fucking, I like that. And, yeah, the, and the logo came out dope. So I seen on the hoodies last night. That shit was fire. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, we're going to do a nice drop with that here coming up. But yeah, so been in the Bay my whole life. Came up through the little Instagram scene, going to the 215 shows. And then... Uh, I, I missed those, by the way. I linked up with my boy, Straight Flame. And that boy really looked out for okay. me at that time. Okay, um, okay. Kind of introduced me. And to, chat with him in the DMs, yeah. Introduced Always. me to a couple of people that I needed. Shout out to, to him. Know. You know, brought me around over to Jungle Boys, introduced me to Ivan over there and chopped it up with him a bit. And yeah, but That's it was love. just nice. Nice to have somebody that actually looks out for you. That's you love. I mean, straight up. And then it was up to me, bro. Just hit the gas and grow, grow low key thing. and that put out it. flame. That was it, bro. Which, uh, as far as the shows and stuff, when did you guys start grinding out shows and, and getting in that whole game? Like from there, like if you just started the IG, keep taking us along that path. Like how to go from there? You, you came up with the was. name. So and I had one of my boys in town. It was a high times in San Bernardino. I had just linked up with Doja. We was just already chopping up about hella seeds. And I have my year right. 2014 or 15. 
Bro, I was just grow low key on Instagram. I didn't even have low key printed up on nothing yet. I showed up to that with a couple packs of flour and just set up a booth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Literally trapping, like just trying to build a brand, you know, that got backed up. I saw how that unfolded. That's when straight flame introduced me to jungle boys. That's when I was able to see West coast cures booth, bro. These boys were branded and popping. Yep. So I'm like, damn, they're taking this marketing thing to a whole nother level. Okay. The next cup that came up was San Francisco. So now we're on the gram. Now I'm kind of in the mix with people and we got a big 20 by 20 booth. And it was like me, Alien Labs, Straight Organics, the Connoisseur Cowboys. I'm not sure if Straight Flame had a booth in there or not. All the homies. We used to run with them in LA. Yeah. Bro, that was like the first main cup for all of us. Back to back. Good That's guys. Fire. You know what I mean? Really good guys, That's too. Fire. And to see the direction where all of us have gone since then and the path <coughs> we took, bro, it's like, holy shit, we all started back to back in the same 20 by 20, bro. Yeah, straight up. You know, so. To bring your brand, kind of your debut to the world, in a that sense. That was what it was. So then it was like, okay, now I got to start doing the jars and doing the packaging, you know, it's not even what I wanted. It's what the people want. And that's what people don't understand. Everyone wants to knock the Mylar game, knock this and that, bro. You have to give the (laughs) consumer what they want. I'll show up to turkey bags and turn heads all day, but that's not what it's about anymore. bro. Yeah. So it's like, we could do that, but give the consumer what they want. If you're trying to build a real brand, the consumer is what matters at the end of the day. So fully agree, bro. That's straight up. Have consistency. Be consistent. Don't try to fill the mylars with whatever. Do some pheno hunting, grow some real genetics, and build a brand. There you, I mean, boom, right the there. Rewind that everything. and listen to that again. By the way, a lot easier said than done. <laughs> can, is, can we bro. get into some of that? Yeah. Yeah. We can, because pheno hunting Might takes up so much space, so much time, so many L's. I mean, nowadays you got good enough breeders to where, like, you're going to find a lot of herms, bro. I ain't going to lie. You know, there's so many hybrids out there, so many projects being done with so little testing. It's pretty tough, man. So it's part of the game at this point. Keep your eyes open. You're real yeah. pheno hunting. Go check your plants every day. It really shouldn't mess up a room if you're in there with your plants that being said bro you're still gonna find phenos that just don't work out you're taking up a lot of space and that's what people don't have the time for they see something frosty and purple and that's their keeper i tell people it's oceanfront real estate that's how expensive that is it is that's bro. how prime that space is so we've been doing that since 2013 14 wow and if you look at my catalog okay i've lost a good handful of keepers over the years. It happens to everyone. You know, it shouldn't, but it does. But we're moving around. We're doing things. But I got like six or seven main strains in my stable that like, I think someone said it on here before every hundred or something seeds, you're lucky to find one, bro. Yeah. yeah Wizard said that. Wizard trees. Yeah. Literally. You can run I back. I think he said it out of it. They go for like a, a thousand. And then I say, I always say out of a hundred seeds, I get one potential keeper. It doesn't matter the breeder. doesn't matter whoever. Out of a hundred seeds, I can, from random people, I can put six different packs together. Out of a hundred, I'll usually find me one potential keeper, not a keeper, a potential That's keeper. Even then, it's- then you got to run it again. Oh yeah. Three, you know, three times uh, for me, it's three times. Second, first time you can't even, I can't really get a great judgment. I, it's going to go 30, 40% better second run. And then usually the second run, if it's something you're interested in, then I'm, then the third run is where you go with it for me. But it's, I mean, think about that. You're talking nine months right there. 100%. And that's nine months if you're good at what you do, like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. To you get know a to seed for. to market right now, you're looking at 10 to 14 months, depending on where you're at in your runs and how fast you can really put it out. And once you get it to market, you're lucky to have more than two tables. Yeah. You know, you can't multiply clones that fast with testing and shit. You can, but at the same time, like we're trying to get shit on tables and it, it takes a while. You know, what's interesting though, it parallels when you're saying this is that with any business that they have a real startup, they have startup costs and a startup cost. If you really want to create a brand for cannabis is you need to have your own strains. And so if that, if that's part of it and a year of a year of your back play has to be chasing strains and stuff, cause I'm, I'm thinking about other businesses now and I'm like, well, yeah, that parallels startup costs. Sometimes there's variables in startup costs with certain businesses that you just can't get around or what happens is these these recreational cannabis companies, right? I, I actually work for one of them. 
they actually I'm, I, I consult for a head grow position at one of these and what they end up doing every round because they they don't have proper management is they buy clones every round from these clone guys in L.A. And what ends up happening is everyone's running the same genetics. Same thing. And it's crazy because now you have so much variables of the same strain hitting the market that when people go to buy that strain, they don't know what they're getting. They're like, oh, I've had that before. It's really good. And then they try it. And they're like, oh, this batch is different. And it's like, no, it's not the batch. It's the grower. That's it's it. the grow. It's a different person actually cultivating it. So it's it's really interesting. I like what you're doing because it's so, so different. Uh, well, so hence the reason why people rename. They yes, have to. Exactly. I mean, almost because like, all right, you have the same genetics. You have the same clone form cut as me. But if if you're doing a shitty job and that's what the consumer is seeing or whatever, like, you, you force you people to kind of rename but and come up with your own like, creations, but why can't they just be different? Do the 14. Exactly. Months, exactly. You know, do the work. Have some real genetics. You know I mean, really I mean? you need four lights in a bedroom and, and a year of work. That's it. And then and you, you can, can figure it gems. out. You'll find something special. Eventually you can base your brand off of. You're hundred percent correct, man. Do your in-house breeding projects and keep things to yourself. Here's what it was, bro. It was like 2015. Uh, 16, 17, 18, it was like the hype of all the main breeders. Go track down all their big drops, you know, try to be the first one to get those drops to market. And I'm sitting there and I'm growing all these breeders gear, paying top dollar for their seeds and no disrespect to them, but I'm giving them all the free advertisement in the world and everyone else is just going to go buy all their seeds and then grow out the same strain names that I have. There's no difference in that. That's when I was like, I'm just going to start naming my phenos. I'll name the genetics, but my phenos are my phenos. That's yes. what it is now, you know? So then I got to a point where I'm like, I'm doing all my own breeding projects in-house or a collab with somebody. You know what I mean? That's when I did the GB6 with the ABF, Always Be Flowering. Um, Great brand, man. I love, I, I, anytime I see their packaging, I'm like, oh, boom. <laughs> yeah. No, he's done well, bro. And it was cool to kind of kick that off with him. And, uh, you know, we both had a, you know, different little vision there for a second and went our own ways after that. And that's how things go, bro. But, uh, he made a great project for me. I'll never knock it. I got some dope shit out of there. Um, very rare stuff. We did a public release on it. People just don't understand how small my releases are. Yeah. They you know? think it's some big, huge company and you will get back to you in six months and pick it up. I'll never market <laughs> my brand like that. Like yeah. this is one of 10, you know what I mean? Like, I'll tell you later on, like, yo, I only released 15 packs of those seeds. And the um, amount of work that went into them was a lot. So a you're lot. like, listen, uh, you know, it is what it is. So then there's projects you're sitting there and it's like, okay, so I only have a hundred packs of these seeds. Like I could sell them all two fifty, three hundred dollars $300 a pack. No problem. Or keep them in house for yourself, hunt your own phenos, market them, control your own market. Yes. So that's just where low key's been at, bro. That's just what I've seen forever. and. That's kind of how I played it out. And you know, what's interesting about that is you're actually breeding what you find interesting. You're not breeding. Oh, well, I know people will buy this or I know this will be super hyped. So let's go ahead and run this times this. It's all just, man, I want to see this. So I'm going to do that. I breed all my phenos that I've kept through the years to each other. Or <laughs> I'll do a hunt of 15, 20 males. Like, okay, for example, when Seed Junkie dropped that 41 Sure BX1, those mm -hmm. packs came out. I knew the market was going to go crazy for him, but I also knew that was going to be a very nice regular drop that I could find a nice potential mail in, you know, of a nice gelato to work. And I've never really worked gelatos under my lines, you know? Smart. I was working flavors and gas. Um, so then I still hunted it out. It wasn't for sure yet. I bought the pack and it wasn't like set to use it. I had Larry Bird breath seeds, cherry breath seeds. Um, I had GB6 BX1 males in that. But you um, had a certain profile you were going for because all of those have like an underlining funk, sweet, uh, potent, like yes. they're, you know, they all hit certain marks. But again, by testing out the males, I still need to see at least something special in that male. You know, that's a tough thing Stress to see. Stress it out a little bit, bring it back to life. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. Do the damn thing. Um, and it was that 41 Sherb that I went to work with and it really worked out. And he, he actually, he stood out, huh? Definitely, bro. Wow. Definitely. Okay. So, I just collected the pollen and started dusting um, real selectively. 
I did about five, six different things. Um, you did this in main rooms where you were blooming regular flower as well. You know, at this what? time, my rooms were super small. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I left one light open, right? I took plants that I just pollinated right around day 26 to 30, give or take, right? And put them back into a room that I just flipped day one. Yep. So now I got these plants that are finishing with the pollen that won't even affect. It'll be sterile by the time, you know. Yeah, no, I like that. You're able to, I, I've heard people do that and it, it's awesome that you're able to do that. And then you got what you got. Holy shit. That's how I did it there. So space is always an issue. You know what I mean? Um, but being able to find these phenos is again, going to these rec guys and saying, Hey, check it out. You guys are growing the same shit as everybody else. Let's work something out here where you guys can take on some real genetics and get me on your team here and I can help you guys and we'll help each other. So I got a couple good partners in the works right now. Um, Damn, that's some serious free game right there. Looking getting a lot of product to market. I got a good guy here in LA I'm working with. Um, good guy in Santa Rosa. And now my boy in Modesto. So I'm pretty spread out, bro. You know, I'm going up and down up. the state all the time, checking on things and keeping in touch with my guys. Uh, but again, when you're at this level, and it's other people growing your strains, there's always going to be the chance that it's not that quality. And the only thing you can do at that point, to be honest, to keep the brand alive is you got to end the contract and be like, bro, you have to change the name on that. You're not going to be able to drop that. And that's in contract. It's on paper. Get it on paper. If you want, if it right. doesn't mean grow low key standard, it doesn't get put out under his brand. hundred percent. So then why label it? Do what you guys got to do. Get it to a distro. I like um, that, man. And that's, I damn. mean, you're on some big business, bro. I mean, that's a million dollars for the game right there for anybody listening. Straight there you up. go. I mean, rewind that. Here's listen to what thing. he said, because a lot of these businessmen, though, grow low key. They don't want to go through that Fino hunt. So they need to come to someone like you, like me, Blackley, you know, whoever that actually has their proprietary strains that they've done their in-house breeding, their in-house strains. This is their stuff. No one has it. Sure. And if you want to cut corners, that's the only corner to cut other than they want to go to these clone farms and just buy clones. I mean, it's crazy. But if you see how us, we, the main brands, the brands that were in that box are slowly starting to talk more, come out more and educate the consumer base on what top notch cannabis is and should be. And then you guys now have a platform here to where you can really educate the people, you know, tell them, what time it is in a sense. Yeah. And just, I mean, you just dropped two huge points in the last 20 minutes. I mean, I wanted to rewind at one point, but it was just like, wow, bro. Basically, I mean, you're dropping big game on people, basically how to scale your brand <laughs> and what to do when the control is out of your hands. And then even how Those to create are two it. major check boxes to keep your certainty in your hand. Like you, you that's keep control of doing. your brand and the brand and, integrity. And the one thing with me, I'm and that's not, just, I'm not scared to kind of give free game out because very few people are even going to take it and run with it. I there, I, there's, <laughs> maybe, true. there's maybe two people, three people that I'm I can really, that aren't like in my circle that I've really sat down at the table with, gave them a breakdown on how they should build out their brand. And I mean, they're doing really well. You of know, course, because you told the truth are. right now. I, I listened to it and I was like, yep, yep, yep. Everything you said was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. okay. Yep, exactly. This is one of these podcasts, I'll be honest, where I would listen to this again. I, no. I listen to what you said, and I wanted to be like, say that again? I mean, amazing, bro. He's dropping game. Serious but, game. So let, let, let's keep bro, it going I've from been, there. I've been in the game 16, 17 years. And I can tell it was a rocky start, like you said. So a lot of that that path is set from there. Yeah, and when I mean, you in the game, like growing the plant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but what was the first time you smoked, bro? I want to know the first time you ever you smoked. Were 12, or, right? <laughs> what were you doing? What were you, was where, like, where'd you go? 2000. I had this little park by my house, bro. I was with my boys, my day ones. And park. Uh, Always right. a park and play. <laughs> we was just curious, bro. You know, we all had older brothers. It was me and two main yeah. homies, bro. And we all had older brothers that were three to five years older than us. And we was together playing sports every day. And then seeing our older brothers running around having parties and shit, you know? So that's what it was. It was like summer, sixth grade. And man, we just went to the park and my boy pulled out this like 
You know those old school metal pipes that you like twist together? Type <laughs> shit, bro? Yeah, bro. You know what's funny? That's like kind of everybody on the show. They said a metal pipe. That's like the word of God. Like. Yeah, man. <laughs> Eight out of ten people. Hell that's yeah, our we, first time smoking. Damn straight, we know about the metal pipes. <laughs> that's what it was, bro. And uh, I liked it, but still, again, like young as shit, I ain't trying to have my parents know what time it is yet. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I just had to kind of keep it low, bro, and. I got into seventh grade and it was like, eh, whatever, you know, and I started getting more into sports. It was swag though, or what? What were you smoking the first? I mean, uh, you were out here. Bay, I mean, bro, and it you had older brothers. Some fire. Bro, you oh. in the Bay. Because it, all I remember at that point, it was Chris Lee Green and Smell Good. You know what I mean? I was young as shit. I hadn't seen much, you know, but from that point on, like, bro, I mean, you would see swag, but you would know it's just whack. Like, what the fuck is that, bro? Um, everyone around me had fire, bro. There was people Damn. growing at the time. I mean, we're talking 2000, 2001. So prop 215 popped off in 96. By 2001, 23, you actually had some legit four light growers that grew some fire. And it would trickle <laughs> down through the junior highs and high schools. Um, and so by 2000, Five six, it was Granddaddy Purple, bro. Okay, so that grapes. was the big one you purps. remember. Yeah, it was That's grapes. Everything hit. was grapes, and then there was like a little bit of Bubba Kush and some Kush starting to float around. Some OG, you know what I mean? Um, but it was super rare to get your hands on. I like a good Bubba. Organic can and Santa Rosa, they used to carry some pretty good weed, bro. Um, again, at this point, my brother had his cannabis card, and it was pretty cool to see him come home. With these pop top flavors, all these new names. So I'm seeing legit strain names super early on. Are you trying them too or just seeing them? Like, would he let you have access to them? Not so much. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I just I had to ask. Just, I would get access to them. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> pitching. Yeah, you're pitching. But, uh, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I wasn't like that yet, bro. But by the time I was like 16, bro, I mean, it was growing together. That first time you smoked, That's did you get, damn. you got lit? I mean, you were smoking crippy. That was fire. Yeah, I mean, I definitely got lip, bro. But again, you just don't know what to expect, what to feel. You just know it's a little different. It was like the second or third time. And it was just like, okay, this is what you're supposed to feel. Yeah. You know? So then by that point on, it was just, all right, I'm getting stoned now. This shit's cool. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. And then how long before you actually, like, plants actually came in play? Plants came in play. So I was probably a freshman. And I seen my brother grow some white widow, bro. Oh, fire. Yeah. So it was 2004, right? And my brother comes up to me and he was like, I want to start breeding. And I'm like, who the fuck's breeding, bro? In 2004, Four, bro. Wow. Who's breeding right now? Like, just grow fire. You grow fire, bro. You know, just focus on that. If anything, I'll move all the work. You know what I mean? Like, just. Grow fire, you grow fire. Don't make seeds right now, please. <laughs> I fucked up, bro. I fucked up, you know, because literally, I mean, that was the time where the biggest breeders in the game right now were building out their seeds. And the biggest thing with my brother at the time was, bro, we were in such a small circle, little town, one little hydro store that like, you just didn't talk about shit. And I wasn't on no forums ever, bro. You know what I mean? So yeah, me neither. You just never really seen shit like that and didn't talk to people. So he was failing at the time, too. Like, he'd have a fire run, and the next run, he'd get wiped out with PM. You know? So it's like, what the fuck is all this white shit all over these plants? Like, literally, though, my brother was smart enough to just throw it away. Yeah. You know? like He, just he knew like, it went bad. Yeah, for sure. He wasn't trying to put that out there like that. Um, I mean, and then he learned from it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he took enough L's to where it kind of led him to do a little bit of a career change. And then I just came up, bro. And I was just like, fuck it. Yeah. I'm going to take over what we should have been doing. And what was the first strains you were running where it was random stuff through, through businesses? You say like clones you picked up from oh, spots? I never got to run the same strain twice because I never mommed out or cut my own stuff. So, yeah, it was like finding whatever you can and... I ain't going to lie. I had a pretty good vision early on. My room started small, but got big quick. So I needed a lot of clones. Yeah. And it always was like, maybe I'd be lucky to get a couple, two or three strains, but rarely one to fill out my whole room. Oh, wow. So you're growing a bunch of variations. Hard, you were yeah. in a hard grow right off rip. And then I'm like, I'm not trying to pay 18 bucks a clone at the club and get waxed, you know? So literally I'm over here on it, on Craigslist, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like, but trader. 
literally, who's moving cuts over here? Yeah, Bud Trader came a couple of years later, bro. No joke, but that's where it was, bro. And uh, it was uh, cookies started popping off at the time, you know? Wow, okay. This was like 2008 now. That starts popping off. And I didn't really know about it for a couple of years, but I eventually got my hands on a cut that trickled down. And that's when I really was able to like, let's go. You know, I knew that like I had, I could grow some fire. I grew the grape stomper, um, the sour grapes. And I did that, but it was a thin mint cookies cut was one of the first things I was able to grow two times in a row. Damn. It sounds fire too. thin mint from way back then. I used to like the old school thin mint, but yeah, you know, let me reverse a little bit there. So before that, I got wiped out from a broad mite, bro. Ooh. Like literally took out everything Damn. I had. Spider mites um, are control rough, that, man. It wasn't a spider. It was a broad mite. Broad mites. Okay. And at the time, no one really knew what the fuck this thing was. You know, I was one of the first people in Sonoma County to get hit with it. You bred the broad mite. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, I was kidding. Bro. That thing ruined my life. Bro. Yeah, exactly. A bunch of people's, bro. It going, ruined up. I'm sure. Going from having something to having nothing overnight, like, it was disastrous, bro. And it wasn't even, like, overnight. It was a long period of time because with the broad mite, what happens is you'll have an okay veg. Maybe you'll see a few deficiencies here and there, some leaf curl, a twist. But at the time, you're thinking, like, what am I doing wrong? Yes. You know, you're not thinking that there's bugs in your room. They're microscopic. You need a 20 times lens to see these things. So I went to like day 14 of flower and my plants turned like brownish gray and wilted and died. Bro. I'm like, what did I do wrong? That was actually probably better than it getting spider webs everywhere. Yeah. So, but I didn't know. I thought it was me. So I replanted. Oh God. And I went through a whole nother cycle of the same thing, uh, a weird veg. And then, so you're looking at newts, you're trying to figure out the room, like what, what is going on? Bro. Yeah. And oh, then I started man. talking to people and boy at the hydro store was like, bro, I think this is what you have. And started showing me pictures of what his boy had up North and, and they were just freaked through, out, like, freaked out, bro. I killed everything. Yeah. Lost when you see everything. pictures of what they, what he's talking about, it's scary. They're scary looking. Yeah. So, um, that set me back big time, big time, big time. And then, um, that got me on to cutting my own clones keeping my own moms and that's what allowed me to start writing things two or three times in a row and really being able to dial something in um which then led to phenol hunting and going from there you learned like the hard way but you learned at the right time because god forbid that would have been later in life when it was strange that we had, you know uh, that would have been a huge loss at least they were clones that you know and it was in the beginning and now it scared the shit out of you to the point where now you know like taking anyone else's stuff in you're like no i'm good I'm pretty yeah. good on that. What what had you uh, in the in the mindset of like just running with the clones? You were just go 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 and didn't want to use the space for the moms and do it like that, or because in my head it was uh, get more lights up and <laughs> grow more flowers. Yeah, exactly. You know, I just exactly. didn't, wasn't thinking like that. No, you have a really you. good my, business I, mind. It was never I, that I, I, put I'm to the same me that way. like that of like you can do this and then have a nursery and blah blah blah. Yeah. So. What happened was, again, I took my circle that was closest to me and just started putting people in positions, bro. You're going to run some moms over here for me. Keep them hella clean. Don't, don't, you know. So once that started getting in motion, it made things a lot easier. Um, Smart to segregate. Again, there was two or three times over the last few years that I've taken in some clones from other brands that just weren't right. You know, gave me problems, set me back a long time. But at least I have some quarantine procedures in place to fucking treat them and make it right. That's honestly the only way. If you're gonna if you're gonna decide to take in other people's genetics, you almost have to have a quarantine, an extended garage, uh, something outside where you have a tent that you can spend six to eight months as a triage, basically trying to get health back or cure broad mites, spider mites, PM, unless you pythium. Have, unless you have a consistent nursery that you were pretty trusted with and again you always got to be cautious even with um, them just always taking clones thinking they're dirty <laughs> the best thing you could Go do is pop mindset. seeds if you have the time and the money and if not I always tell people go to the guy that you think grows the best weed and see if you can get something from him 
because that that's your best shot well, at getting something clean. If you you know, hundred seed hunts like what me and Wizard Trees and you know you a couple of the real pheno hunters that take the time to do it. You know that takes a lot of time, bro. And money. Somebody that just wants to do a project that wants to take one pack of seeds every four months <laughs> that has a little bit of space, pop ten or twelve seeds and just see what happens. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people out there with a four light tent, a two light tent, you know, something small and there's just personal smoke. Start popping some seeds. You're going to find something different and create yourself your brand. I mean, we used to do 600 seeds a year. Like when we were doing black leaf for That's three, dope. four years, we would start off. We would do six. That was about our average was 600 seeds. And we found a lot of cool keepers. T- talk about, uh, talk about your process when you deciding if it's a keeper or not. Oof. I'm going to talk about my process kind of like earlier on because now Perfect. I have a little bit more space. So I don't think people have as much space as me right now. So I'd like to let them understand. Absolutely. That'd be dope. So I pop my seeds. Um, I use a paper towel. It's what my brother taught me early on. It's just get it a little wet, not completely dripping, saturated, but, you know, get it damp and then trickle a little bit of drips of water over the seeds, put it in something dark for a few days and keep an eye on it. And that paper starts drying out, get it a little more wet. Yep. It's always done really well for me. Um, Take them out. Yeah. Then I start them in little cups or little four inch pots. Um, How much longer after you take it? How long do you keep them in the first thing? I probably wait to see like a few inch tail. So maybe three, four days, five days. Yeah. Five days. Yeah. Um, Get a nice tail on there. I don't like doing them super small. It's just, I don't know. I like digging a nice hole down and putting the whole tail in there. I've done them both ways, but for me, that's just what I like. Yep. Um, So I do that. Then I'll start getting, you know, the leaf sets going, get, four or five nodes, get a thick little stalk. And what I like to do right away is top them. And me being able to top them right there at that stage as they're still coming up, if it's a strong, nice plant, 90% of them will show sex within a week. So I can look at right where I top them and start seeing what they are without really having to test them. So I'll so start moving. Right when it gets, you're saying what, four inches, tell people about four or five inches tall? Yeah, like, you know, five, six inches with a good stock, like almost a good clone size. Okay. You know what I mean? To and where you'll pinch it. And I'll top it. Yeah, the very top. And pinch then it. where are you looking to see? Right where I pinched it after like a week when it's getting thicker and those bottom nodes start coming up more since you put a little stress into it right there. I'll really be able to see. Either if it's going to be a female pistol coming out or if a little nut sack starting to form. And wow, my eyes can bro. Tell right away now, you know, we've worked with seeds a long time. So I'll be pretty quick on that process. Um, then what I do just to make it quicker is I send my seed stock into the flower room. I'm not keeping that seed stock alive as the mother. It's just a quicker process for me. So I'll take cuts off of that seed as it's going into the flower room. Yep. Um, Basically as a nice size teenager, you know? Um, And then everything gets bloomed and you have backups already. Exactly. So now we're at day one, you have all your seeds in your room. You have backup cuts of everything in the cloner. Um, You know, you get beautiful genetics that can root in seven to 10 days sometimes, but sometimes things take 14 to 20. So, I try to push it as long as I can in the clone tray because it takes up minimal space. Oh, great idea. So now I'm sitting there at like day 21 with all the seeds in the flower room and I have all the backed up clones in my clone trays. And now at day 21, you're really starting to see if things are starting to herm or not. So now I can start knocking things out right away at day 21. If I see a herm, boom, it's gone. Go back to the clone rack, get that one out of there. Boom, it's gone. If there's a male that I missed, boom, that's out. It's gone. So at day 21, I really start dwindling things down towards day 28. You know, that's the main herm stage. 100%. Um, yeah. And then by day 35, I'm like slowly taking things out of the clone rack. Um, I'll start gambling with myself. You know, I'll look at the plant at like day 28 to 35 And you can tell if something's going to be fire when you've worked with enough plants. So I'm like, oh, these ones have potential right here, right now. I'll transplant three or four of these ones because I always take like five or six backup cuts just to make sure I have a few that are rooted. And usually I'll get a decent success. So I'll have like four to five that are rooted. And the ones that I have my eyes on early, I'll go put 
four moms of that right away. And then the ones that are iffy, I'll only do one mom just to keep space down. And sometimes I'm wrong. Most of the time I can get it down. And then that way I'm still minimizing space. Yeah. And focusing in on the best ones. Exactly. So now we're at like day 50 and things and you're transplanted the clones. Those are coming up and you really have your eyes on certain things. By that point in big hunts, you really know what you don't want to run again. Yeah. There's certain things that you want to see what the flavor is and you're going to keep around, but there's certain things that you're just done with and you don't want to deal with no more. Um, and that's around day 50. Yeah. And you basically know by then getting close. Yeah. Um, so then I kind of don't let it down more to the more potential ones until we actually get to have the Fino release party with the crew. And those are super fun, bro. You know, you get your group around to smoke new flavors every day. There's nothing like it, man. Damn. Um, another million dollars worth of game, bro. I just want to say, because people, we don't celebrate the wins. We have so many crops and it's, it's an ongoing job, you know, and it never ends that sometimes you get drowned down and just, it's just another crop. It's just another day. And if you actually, I like what you're saying, because you basically bring in your team and you celebrate your win. Yeah. You just won together. Yeah. We had a great crop together. We didn't have problems. We, we found some dope shit. Let's celebrate this together. It's dope because it's I one love thing that. I'm not scared to talk about now because they've done so much for me. Um, bro, early on, I reached levels that like I'd done everything I could by myself. It was time if you want to get to the next step, put a team around you. Straight up. I saw that early on. So I put people in position and got a solid team around me right now. And with me, bro, like everyone eats, everyone gets a spot at the table if they want one. And damn near, if they want their own brand, they're going to get their own brand. What my team wants, they get, bro. Because at the end of the day, I'm in L.A. because of them, bro. They're home right now taking care of things. Okay, I was able to bring a bunch of them out here. But two or three of my main guys couldn't come out here. Yeah, straight up. Life of a girl. That's what it is. So you got to sacrifice and been many and many trips, man. That's yeah. what it is, bro. Or we know like three days we max, would win, and, you know, and it, you can't on phone calls here and it's there like leaving kids over. at the house or something. Yes. Yeah. You can't do that. But yeah. No, that's talk about the sacrifice. That's so crazy. Now so that's dope. I try to, in every harvest have at least 10 phenos, you know, so it gives us something to look forward to every harvest. And wow. what I started doing Damn. is I started uh, taking them off my tables and running them on the sides of the room. Um, still enough close to the light where it's not like going to be whack. But again, I didn't want to continue dedicating a, a whole light when I could put 10, 15 phenos in a room at a time and run them down a straight line on my two tables. Cause I got rolling benches. I'll just leave my benches open and run a whole line of phenos down the middle. And what are you in the benches? You're running cocoa, soil, hydro. So I have a couple soil rooms and I have a lot of cocoa rooms. I started switching over to the cocoa. Man, I was so scared. I ran soil forever. Mm -hmm. I ran soil forever. It was the flavor. It was a smoke for me. When I linked up with North Bay, bro, that boy crushes cocoa. Um, that boy crushes everything. I ain't going to lie. With me, I'm more of the business mind. I love the plant. I just know what works for me. That boy's more of the scientist. He's going to read, 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 read. He wants to try something new every time. I want to keep things simple. What worked before, he wants to get a new nutrient. Good get balance that going. between you two. So that's what it is, bro. And when I linked up with him, it was just like the perfect match. You know, and he's been my boy for years. I'll take it back to uh, when we was at that cup with Alien Lab Straight Organics. Um, I mentioned one other brand, and that was the Connoisseur Cowboys. So that was my homie, and he popped that brand off. He ended up having a different vision and went a little different route. He's kind of bringing it back to life right now. Um, but North Bay was his right-hand man at the time, you know? So he was in that booth working, that booth. They did actually, uh, High Times did a little article on them, big old picture in High Times of that crew. It was funny. You got me, Alien Labs, and Straight Organics right there, and High Times goes over to the Connor Sewer Cowboys, and it was just dope for them to get that exposure at that event. Um, but at that time, North Bay was already doing things. He was running a lot of, a lot of rooms for a lot of people. Um, and it was just a matter of time, you know, he pulled up on me. Like, well, again, he's from, from my city. So we've been around, he pulled up on me for some fire. He just wants some smoke, you know? And then, uh, one thing lead to another, bro. You put two people like us together. Yeah. We're going to put a play <laughs> down, smoking some you know? good weed together. So That's I was like, bro, you need, you need your own brand. You need to do this shit. We're going to team up here. You know, I'm, going to make this lane happen for us. And bro, he just crushes it. Yeah. You know? So there's a couple of rooms that, you know, he fully runs and 
he's in full control of and I go in and I check up on him here and there, but I really don't even need to, bro. That boy crushes it. And then I have my rooms that, you know, I'm in there every day. I'm in there with my stuff. I do a lot of the newer stuff. I'm always doing newer flavors. You know, I get a new strain, a new pheno, and I get one or two lights of that. That's what I love to do. So I'll take all the newer stuff. And then once we have something ran a couple, th- you know, two, three times and we can get bigger rooms done of it, those are going to his rooms. And then he can do the big room. Man, shout out North Bay Gardens, bro. Yeah. Helping a helping so. brother out, man. That's dope. You guys are dope team, bro. Yep. And then, yeah. uh, you know, another boy from my town, One Life Exotic. Um, it's another brand we're starting to push right now. He's real good friends with Kraft Farmer out of Santa Rosa. Mm-hmm. Kraft has a really nice position up there working for Mercy as their lead cultivator. Um, That's dope. So it's cool to get my genetics in there, and we're really starting to work. We just finished up the first PBG run. Hell yeah. Um, it's drying right now. Really hoping to get it to market. But again, I'm going to go check it out and make sure it's okay. It's not grown by me. It's grown by Kraft Farmer. So we just got to make sure that, you know, we have it down right and people understand what's going on right now. I like that you put that out there so people know. And that's kind of cool because you bring a different aspect to it. There's no hidden agenda. It's, hey, man, this is my strain and this is a collab. It's Kraft Farmer. You know what I'm saying? It's a collab between you guys and you're just trying to put out fire product. And sometimes you're like, yo, and sometimes it ain't going to work, but sometimes it's going to work. And you guys are going to get the best of both of us. It's fucking dope. So Lagunitas Brewery is from my town, right? Really cool. Um, And I seen what they did early on in the craft brewery scene. Um, Literally making new brews all the time, keeping them super limited drops. Um, And I saw that cannabis had that angle to it. Eventually it will get there. And I just wanted to focus on that. I would love to be able to have that craft brand like a couple of the other guys, you know. They've already cornered the market, Wizard Trees, DEO, Alien Labs, you know, they shout out to those guys. Yeah, you know? they're killing it. Being able to sit back and see what Alien has done, you know, because again, we kind of started the same place. A phone call away from me. You know, if I need anything, that boy's right there. Absolutely. Um, shout out to Ted, man. So to yeah. be able to pick his brain as I'm navigating everything right now, priceless. Oh Absolutely. man, that's a huge, that's huge. Priceless. Branding genius. That's awesome. Shout out Ted for doing that too, man. Yeah, Alien Labs. Yeah. And I mean, I see that common link between you and him too, is that you guys put people on around you. I mean, look at you. I mean, you're shouting everybody out around you. You're, I you're big and like up in them. If you're not putting people on around you, I mean, <laughs> what are you doing? A hundred percent. I agree, bro. It's just the market is so big. Yes. If you can build a brand and then help the people around you get on, I mean, you're really doing something at that point. Teamwork makes everyone's dreams work. I mean, it doesn't matter who, if yours is different than mine, if we work together, we're going to get both of our dreams across that finish line. You know, I think that's so cool, bro. Fuck yeah. So yeah, it's just, you know, staying busy. I got a lot of things in the works. Um, Like I said, the PBG just finished up. I think uh, I have a gassy taffy run coming out of LA here soon. Um, gassy yeah. taffy. I wanna, <laughs> shit, the flour on that? You doing flour on that? Yeah, flour on that. So it's, I guess since we're here, though, I'll say this. Uh, there's one place right now in LA that has my heavy fog number four. Um, honestly, it's one of the best things he did in the facility. I already saw the little test batch he did. And we're about to blow that out and hopefully get that to market here within the next three or four months. And we'll have a nice big drop at Green Wolf. Set that off. That's fucking dope. People got to try that. If they got to go out and seek that out, man, that is so fire. 100%. I really enjoy it. The way it. you're making it happen, like you came down here and got with the cultivator, and now you guys are got it already. Like you're moving, it's man. It's already here, bro. You're moving militant. It was bro. already here yeah. before I entered. You're moving it, you militant. I mean? So it was, it was special. for real. You're a general. Um, and then, you know, I, I got a lot of collabs in the works. You know, I got something going with Backpack Boys and the Peanut Butter Gelato right now. Hell you know, yeah. If that, if that checks all the boxes, expect to see that drop over at the Backpack okay, Boys. Okay, shout out shop. to G, man, and those boys, Definitely. Backpack Boys, 100%. Um, super solid crew. Um, man, you. Is coming? I, got, I got a breeding project about to pop off with a big name. I'm not going to release the name right now, but just know that's coming. Um, real nice breeding collab with definitely an established breeder. And they're more on the hash side of things too. So is that going to be in-house or are people going to be able to grab It'll the seeds? It'll be a public release. Oh, dope, dude. Great. I can't wait. Definitely. That's awesome, bro. We'll probably look at that release towards the end of the year. Okay. Right. What, what know, do you think you guys are going to be chasing? 
I think I'll be reversing <laughs> the gassy taffy in okay. there. Okay. Okay. You know, and okay. we'll be hitting a lot of stuff, and then they have a lot of their own stuff that they've worked into lines. So it'll be my key stuff, their key stuff, and we got a lot of stuff coming. Um, oh. Another strain that I have worked off of the PBG. It was with the forty one tricks from uh, um, ABF in my project. Dope, yeah, dude. The gelato forty one to the tricks, and then. Honestly, I mean, this is how some things happen. I watch the 41 tricks Herm onto the PBG. Literally watched it. And I took that plant that it Hermed on out of the room immediately, the closest one to it. And I just pulled the seeds out and played with them. And there came peanut butter acai. Dope, dude. And so that's what I just dropped a super small batch of peanut butter acai. I got peanut butter acai rosin coming out soon. And literally that peanut butter acai is like a peanut butter gelato times two. And it's not even, our, the, so the plant that came out of the Herm cross isn't a Herm. No way. No See, way. and I love well, how you're When pl- I found the peanut butter gelato, mm-hmm. out of 20 of those seeds, 19 were Herms. But one wasn't. That was how the- was the peanut butter gelato for stable enough for me to keep it around this long, not have any issues with it? And be here today, bro. Like that, Trippy. That's, that's the thing crazy. with pheno hunting is it's fucking amazing. And that's kind of where me and uh, Surefire were at at the time. You know, I just kind of ran with it and did my own thing as, as he did his own thing. But to be honest, like, yeah, that boy was a part of me getting that peanut butter gelato going for sure. And, you know, he definitely deserves that credit. Absolutely. But, people uh, need to take the good with the bad, though, because a lot of times people buy seeds and they're like, I found a herm and they get all upset and it's this big problem or or a couple of these were herms. I mean, look what you're going through and you're telling people like, listen, it's a hunt for a reason. When you're digging for gold, you might find a piece of shit. You might find dirt. You might find, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what the fuck you're going to find, but guess what? You might find a piece of gold, but along the way, you don't complain about the other bullshit you got to go through and And look what you're going through to you're like 19 of Herms and then people would be freaking out over that. But you're like, yeah, so what doesn't matter. Guess what I found though. And that's what happened. I mean, yeah, I love that, bro. And people can't, they need to listen to that and take that shit deep, what you're saying right there, because it's the same thing when I purchase seeds. I don't give a fuck if what we're going through this, that, the other. It's it's what are we going to find in the end? That's that's all I'm worried about. Oh, this breeder had a bunch of males. Okay, cool. Did we find anything? Oh, there's a bunch of herms, but did we find anything? Oh, when that happens, it's almost like I want to see what somebody else might find if they was to get this in their bag on accident. Yeah, so, you're right. Although I knew it was potentially something special um, by accident again, it still had the potential enough for me to want to go in and look further. And, you know, when I found, bro, the peanut butter acai is the exact opposite of the peanut butter gelato. The peanut butter gelato is the most stretchiest plant I've ever worked with. My other guys that have grown that plant, they don't like it. The first time Surefire grew it, he didn't like it. <laughs> he was like, this thing's going to touch my light. Uh, off color, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so that's what it was. People just didn't know what to expect. Yeah, um, man. You have to top it early. You have to train that bitch or she's going to give you problems. Yeah, um, man. The acai grows like a Bubba Kush. The thing stays squatty. It stays short. It's hella leafy. If you're not in there taking more sunlies off than normal, you're going to get hella you know, little marbles. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're not going to get anything chunky, but the buds just are little rocks and it's super dope to see. And it's like a Kush crown, you know, that bubble Kush crown uh, on like a gelato gassy. And then I just put the acai name on it because again, I'm going to run with that peanut butter name because we, you know, no, it works great we're for there you with it. Uh, well, so when you're looking at though at a new strain like that, or what are you exactly looking for? Like you're, you're, you're looking at the new flower, right? And you're, you've already, you're like, this is a potential keeper here. It is in the jar. You brought your team to the table for the tasting or whatever. What actually convinces you that that's the keeper? Is it, are you looking for a certain thing or are you saying I'm open to any type of profile flavor? I just want fire. Like what, you know what I'm saying? What are you exactly looking for right now? It's so hard Cause you got to look at it from two angles. Are you growing for yourself or are you growing for market? You know, mm. we're sitting down at, around a table with multiple people with different palettes that we all like different things. And I, I can't just go, if you say you don't like something that don't mean it's trash. I agree. You know what I mean? So I am more geared towards now for market. There's a lot of things that I like that market might not like. Um, so it is a different approach, but the flavor has got to be there, bro. Um, I mean, I got 
a gaseous flower here for a reason. I feel like I really try to focus on that. I want some gas in my weed. Um, <laughs> you know, up. if you look That's at the rosin really market thing. before PBG came to the rosin market and then what I've brought after, it was a lot of fruit. Yeah, it, is. it was. And now I've been able to get gelato terps that wash, the PBG that wash, it's a double scoop that followed it up, bro. I'm telling you, like people that are slowly going to see that trickle in. It's this flower is terp. fucking amazing. Um, so just to be able to get something different in there and to focus on some gas, that's what I like. Um, so yeah, it, it, and the look's got to be there, you know, but at this day, the look's on a lot of fucking weed, bro. Yeah, it you is. Know? So you literally, there's a lot of pretty weed out there. Um, it's just, you're looking it, for something different. You want it to be different. different. Yeah. A lot of times. So like, okay, have you ever come to the table and a lot of your guys are like, this is the one, this is the one you're like, this isn't the one, or you're like, this is the one. And they're like, eh, it's whatever. You guys ever have conflicts like that where you're like, I got to just go with what I think. And that was the peanut butter gelato early on. Okay. Okay. You know, it literally, uh, it, it was finicky enough to where if it's not dialed in, it's going to stay green. You know, it's not going to color up as much. Um, but when it's done right, and it was like the third round, it was done right. That's when my circle was like, okay, you were right. You know, that's um, awesome. I've done it long enough to kind of focus on the aspect of getting things to market and fire at the same time. My crew trusts me with that. Um, so it's a lot easier when you got good guys behind you. Uh, but I'll take in literally consideration of what they say. But if one guy's super hot on something and I'm not, well, you just take the pheno. You know, you could go grow it. If you really like this plant, I don't want to work it. You could go grow it. I have no problem with it. Oh, that's dope, You know man. what I mean? So yeah. like keep it around. One thing that I have a big problem with, though, is people releasing phenos that they're not keeping. So let's say you hunt a 10-pack. You find a number one. There's a number two or three. You don't want to release your number one, but you're down to release two or three. Well, if you ain't going to keep it, why the fuck are you releasing it? Very true. You're watering down the market. So yes, either you are. release your keeper at top dollar, which nowadays top dollar, we don't even know where a set thing is priceless. I've turned down ridiculous numbers for my clones. If a breeder, if a certain breeder gets a hold of your clone, your value is done. Yeah. I've had breeders reach back out to me for keeper cuts that I found of their seeds where we had purchased the seeds for 400, 200, whatever a pack found a keeper, spent a year, finally found one. They're like, Hey man, I'd love to bring that back into my garden and breed, breed again with it. And I'm like that. And you'd also love to give my keeper cut out to a bunch of growers mm -hmm. and blow it up for you so that it looks great on the breeder side that like, here's this amazing keeper cut. If you gave me the seeds, we can have a conversation. But if it's like, you know, it's, it just doesn't make any sense. And, and that's why it's tough for breeders. You, you got to really take the standpoint on both sides. That's my mindset right now with a lot of angles, because I mean, I'll even say it. Um, if y'all ain't giving me things, I'm not giving you things. So yeah. for example, <laughs> if you want me to hunt your gear and pump your stuff up, which I really don't have time for right now, cause I'm so focused on my of own course. stuff. You should be handing me those seeds for free and hoping that I show the love out of respect to post it, to take care of you on that. Right. Straight up. If, yeah. if you look at my page, bro, I'm low key. I stay low key. I'm not sitting there tagging the nutrient companies. I use the soil companies. I use all that. I take my marketing approach very seriously. Yeah. There's a lot of like people that are out there and they just want the clout and they want them to like their shit. I give a fuck. <laughs> if you want me to take care of your brand, you're going to take care of my brand. And I'm not asking for something for free. But let's just sit down at the table and get an agreement out. You know it's what I mean? It's mutually beneficial. 100%. Yeah, it has to wash both backs. You see certain brands doing that with certain people and you see them blowing up. And it's a very smart business approach. Collab to the top. But just know your value in this industry because you give out a lot of free game and you're just selling other people's products. You know what I mean? So make relationships that last long, find some loyal people and take care of each other. But at the end of the day, that's kind of where the early breeding was based off of. And they got so lucky on it was the fact that you had all these people out here buying seeds. Right. And then just giving everybody all the free advertisement in the world. Yes. Yeah, they were. And, it was and getting a lot of the cuts back. A lot of people they giving did. the cuts back. And I know? was showing all that love, bro. Early on, Absolutely. if you go back on my page, I left a lot of my pictures up. You know, you could go back on my timeline and see a lot of shit. Um, but 
I used to show a lot of love, bro. Yeah. A lot of love. It and was it wasn't just, being reciprocated. No way. And so then you learned your lesson. So I just put a stop to it. Bro. Yeah. I was just took my own team, took my own lane, and I was showing love to these guys that show me love. Now. I'll get people that'll hit me with these crazy stories and they'll say like, hey, man, I got this crazy idea and I want to do this, 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 and this. And, and I always go right to, I'm always open to mutually beneficial ideas. Yeah. And that'll either stop or, them in their tracks or they'll move forward and be like, yeah, bro, this is what you would get out of it. It just shows them like, listen, I'm down to help you. But like, what are we doing here and how are we working together on this? Because it has to go both ways. It's not worth it. It's 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 the same with anything and and mutually beneficial. People need to Especially know that. Especially in some of our positions now. You know what I mean? Like we're getting to a point now where there's some brands that really can choose the direction of where waves go. Yeah. If you look at industry leaders that start talking shit about certain strains, uh, the next day that strains value is diminished or people selling packs and they put out bag seeds and now everyone's running the same strain as one guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy out there right now, but then people get upset about it. There's a lot of weird. I think if you take your feelings out of it tough, you just have to understand if you're going to put out flour for market, there's a good chance there's going to be a seed in that flower. And 99 out of 100 people that find that seed are going to be stoked and they're going to call it what it is. You get it? So if someone finds my PBG or my gassy taffy, they're going to damn well want to call that PBG or gassy taffy. They want to be known to get that to market. That's what it is. But in retrospect, the ones in the industry, the breeders to understand genetics, understand that, yes, that is not the exact same cut. It could be similar. It is not the exact same. Genetic. Still a bag seed. So that's where the dispute comes up with all this. It, it, I can't get into it, bro. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, what, I, what? I've been in it so long and I've put out so many different flavors that it's just part of the game. I had a guy find a dirty Sprite bag seed and took a picture of it and would update me every single day seven days a week, how it was doing and how it was growing and how, and like, Oh dude, can't wait. And it, it got to the point where it was like relentlessly annoying the fuck out of me. And uh, I had to like, look at it from a different angle that just like, he's stoked. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm absolutely. looking at it. Like you're showing me that you have my genetic and you're updating me seven days a week on it. Like it's fucking crazy. I but someone doing the same thing. To me, bro, <laughs> and I just kind of like told them like, Hey, it's a back seat, but you you know, do what you want, bro. I, yeah. I kind of just, Life is life and you got to let people and he and they're stoked. They're young growers and all they want to do is look up to it low key and know that like, dude, I, I'm doing something like you're doing, so it is. you I know, have, and you have to look I at it like that. Of yours that nobody else has. And yeah. Oh, and you're like, I'm working on 23 other things this year. Like you already know. OK. And now that you say that, that's where I'll bring this up. Everything I do right now is a risk to reward process. When you're going into these facilities, if you look at the track record of every big brand that's gone into a facility that's done a licensing deal on genetics, okay, there's been a leak at some point or another. Always. It's super tough. You're around uh, regular hourly employees that don't give a fuck, that are trappers out on the street that want to take your cut and want to give it out there and might understand the value of your cut. They either don't like you. They either hear that you can sell cuts for a thousand, five thousand, whatever it is that, I mean, or they want their own grow and they want to grow what they see in your garden. hundred thousand. They're always uh, leaked. That's how we have all the best cuts, even cookies. It's a big risk to reward. Um, Try to find good growers that have the same vision that understand what your genetics are and where it's at. But again, man, You can't control everybody at every facility. So like you said, I'm working on so much new shit. When I'm giving somebody something to run or putting something in somewhere, I mean, I already got something else coming. And if something happens, man, I I hope it doesn't. But bro, out of my hands, I ain't going to put too much energy into it. Being proactive is the only way huh? around that. It sounds like Pat God's like to be proactive. I mean, it's a tough battle because that's like a never ending chase. But it's the only way around that because and then you weed out those employees because eventually you'll figure out who it is and all that. But that is a tough battle, man. It is. And all it's, the strains are getting it's a part. Of, it's just a part of business. Pretty simple. You're right. The market is too small. Theft. Part of life and business. And Theft we've been doing this one. since kids learning who steals or who lies. And then you just since go a kid, to you know, where you hear that new pack came from and you backtrack and you usually find things out. And at the end of the day, you know, if you got to pay them a little bit of money. Yeah. 
<laughs> now nah, you got to have that team culture that weeds it out quick. That's yeah. Like, hey, something's up with this dude. That's oh, where your people you know, are like, we wouldn't do that to, to the it. boss. The we to wouldn't it. do that to him. It's like how you're having these tasting parties and everything. Like, yes. But as you're saying, he's scaling. He's trusting other facilities. This is a big thing that, that you know, rec market connoisseurs need to understand. A lot of people that are doing this, really doing this, have been doing this, uh, are trusting facilities right now. And a lot of things are out of their hands with their genetics. It's, so, bro, it's super tough. I mean, for somebody like me to get fully online by myself, um, bro, it's hard. The way they have things written out right now and structured, it's fucking tough. So, Beyond it's tough. easier to find one of these facilities that's going to all these regular nurseries, buying up everything that everyone else has that they can't sell, get them something special and work a deal out. It's yeah. Not that hard. Well, and it's the only way that a lot of people are able to get your product because if not, then they're just going to see it on Instagram and be mad that they can't find it. And that's why I hate posting things sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Cause because they're like, bro, I want that. And you're like, man, what? Yeah. So do I new phenos. <laughs> like I got a 20 pheno hunt right now, 20 new phenos coming online and a lot of them look nice, but like, I can't even sit there and post them really until they're ready to come to market because I'll just get bombarded, bro. And it almost takes the fun out of it, you know? Yeah. You sit there and one, I don't, I don't want to tell all these guys like what time it is and the whole program because just I don't have the time. And two, I get mad because they want it so bad. I can't get it to market yet, you know? And then it's like, shit. It's frustrating because you want to appease people, but yeah. it can't happen yet. And you're looking at something so fire and you're just like, whew. But yeah, just, that's why I trust the process. That's why I always just write that. If people get upset, trust the process. It will get there. I'm working on it. There, there you know, this ditch is getting dug. Definitely. You know, yeah, delayed gratification, man. Yeah, there you go. It's like that with everything in life. The longer you can wait, the better it is. Wow. So, 60 days, like 65, 75 for some I mean, of these strains. Not even. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean and then I, that's I really not even a Fina hunt. I'd really try to hunt for 63. For the things now, I'm finding some cool stuff that finishes up at 58 to 60. But that's that sweet spot. If I'm seeing stuff that's going 70 plus, I mean, I might pass it to a homie, but it's just not where my market's at right now. Yeah, it's it's getting there. Look how comp the competition is. Back in the day, that would have been like no problem. 72, okay, right. as long as it's fire. But right, it's tough these days. You got to come up with something that finishes in two months. And it throws down two plus a light and is fire. And that's just kind of what I'm trying to structure things towards. And when I go into kind of these more corporate meetings right now and having these discussions with these guys, I'm like, you guys want to grow for gram per square foot, but with a different business model. If you've ever looked at price per square foot on growing exotics, there's a different business model to follow out there that's damn near competitive with your three of light blown out trash. You know, and it's just literally, um, you get 1.8 times, two times the price, but you're growing less, but it equals out to the same price and you're actually building a brand. And then all these guys have their lead cultivators on production bonuses instead of quality bonuses. Ooh, I like that. And it's a huge issue. That's another million dollars. Because you got these guys that are sitting there and all they want to do is get three, four light. They want to follow a Roya. They want to blow, bro. No, no, I'm not hating on Arroyo, bro. I've never seen some of this flower look the way it looks in my life, bro. And they're getting it so blown out. Ah, interesting. And it's not just the Arroyo system. I'm just talking crop like, steering in general in and general, steering it to a yeah, full bro, blown out potential. A, out of the facilities I've seen doing it, you're losing a lot of tricone production. You're losing a lot of terps. And if you're growing on a gram per square foot, great. Go get your bonuses. I don't want to work with you. But if you're interested on growing on another scale, I mean, we're right here because that's what I'm looking towards. Bro, that's an interesting point. So you're saying that plant's putting out a certain amount of space and doesn't matter. It's not producing that same amount of trichomes. There's less trichomes for that massive nug versus a smaller. Yeah, I and mean, that they, makes sense. They, it's like stretch marks on a body. So much less. Or that's when you see the name starting to change because it. It's not a representation of what it really was. People know what smokes and what doesn't. Man, that is so interesting, bro. So I, I have seen a couple of times, like even my genetics get blown out in certain rooms where I walk into it. I'm like, that's my shit for real. You oh, know? really? I've never seen it look like that. You know wow, what I mean? Oh, dude. So what I've is, definitely what is seen it? it firsthand. And 
So you're, so people will crop steer your genetics. And I'm not saying just ran, but I'm saying basically take it and say more is more, no matter how much we go, let's push this plant to the max. And they push it to the point of past where it should be of health to the point of not even being able to sell it. And you can't even recognize that it's that's all. That's my strain. Yeah. Wow. 100%. Man, see, that's the first time that we're touching on this that I've heard of this, that crop steering to a point where you're pushing it past. It's it's the same with a person, and all right? all the technology is cool. All that, all that stuff is cool. But I come from a world of growing kind of more on the hand watering base, you know, being in tune more with my plant instead of looking at a phone telling me what's going on. And I'm not knocking people that are involved with the technology, bro. I'm just an 80 bay, 80s baby from the Bay that doesn't know technology at all. You know, I really don't understand. I I do to an extent. A mix just, of both is best. I, I take both. I think a so little bit of both. What I see now with where the industry is going and where the world's changing into, I have to adapt. Yes. I have to start understanding it and being around the people that are in tune with it. But there's still a fine line of, yo, you're steering this plant to a direction it doesn't want to go. Do not compromise com- uh, quality is right. what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so man. That's what it is. If. You can find some of these companies that are so loaded and they want to penny pinch their lead cultivators so much. $120,000, $150,000 a year for a lead cultivator on a major facility is not enough money in my eyes. Hell no. Man, I'm going to clap to that. Not with inflation. Not with with the cost of living in Cali. No, come in Cali. And then they want 60 hours a week. And then what they produce. To have an exotic brand or exotic flowers being grown. You're making millions and millions of dollars for somebody and they're willing to pay you that much. And you're going to be there slaving away. It's 50 yeah. to 60 hours minimum is your oh. very minimum a week. Every Leave single week. Nonstop. Life is the plant, you know? Yeah. It's literally. And if plant. you, if you have one hiccup, no vacation, your no. job is at risk and it's all on you. So it's just like, and it's not you know, worth it. There's gotta be a little more education in that aspect and let people know. Um, With a two car garage, you can make the same amount of money and be your own boss. And that's the issue, right? Is that they want to pay you what a two car garage would make you with 12 lights in it. That's that's what they want to pay you you to run up. So many talented growers right now, bro, that are staying down and watching things around them. Yeah. Because it's just not worth them to come out yet. You know what I mean? There's, too many so snakes many, in the grass still too. There's so many people in the Bay, bro, that could take over a facility and change their whole business model and make them so successful. We could walk into certain places with a library of genetics, our SOPs, everything we want done and change your whole failing model. But it's like almost an ego trip for some of these corporate guys. You know, it makes no sense. I can't figure it out. They don't want to do it or they won't do it or they're lazy. I, it, I am the same thing. I, I don't understand don't believe it. it. So yet. my approach I'm taking right now is just kind of like, this is where I'm at with some licensing deals now. Stay down and build something out yourself over the next couple of years because I want to control the quality. I want North Bay in that room with me every day controlling quality. We're walking through these other facilities controlling their growing ways, you know, and unless they're really giving us consulting fees and things like that, like I'm not going to go tell you exactly what to be done. We're just sitting there on simple little buybacks. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. kind of where it's at. Um, but yeah, I just really want to see the more exotic style of growing just stay that way instead of trying to get gram per square foot. A hundred percent, man. I mean, this is, this podcast can be called a million dollars for the game. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of deep shit we're talking about you right went here. Into so I much shit. It, bro. I, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, like, real. man, I'm sitting here learning. I a talk lot. with my boys. Me too. And, you know, they soak up the knowledge from me. Been in the game so long that this is the first time I've really publicly spoke like this openly, just laying out kind of what I've been through and how it goes. And it's pretty dope, bro. I feel like I have a lot coming out right now, and it's at a time where I can kind of open up more and step into that world and let people know who low key really is. You have a really good business hey, man, I mind. Like I like your angle. You take on things. You make, a, you make a hell of an impression on, uh, on me, on him. Definitely. Mm-hmm. I can tell you make a big impression on everybody around you. So I'm sure the team is going to love to hear this shit. And, and all, all the people that have been enjoying the product for this entire time, yeah. we can now put a brand story behind a brand and, you know, hear how this came about and, Participate. Hear, hear what's coming up and hear what's going down right now. But 
man, you you dove into so much as someone in the industry or wants to get in the industry or figure out how to get in the industry could, could pick up on right now. It's just crazy. Like, and it's from somebody that the only way you could ever learn how to do any of that is just by doing it. That's it. It's just having two feet on the ground and every L you take just bounce back. That's what I try to tell some of these guys that come up to me or they'll DM me and be like, Oh, I want to start my first grow. What do you recommend? Da, 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 da. And it's just like, put yourself in a position to where when you lose everything, you're not dead broke, bro. Don't start to Damn. where if you lose your first crop, you ain't got shit to bounce back on. Put a little one year goal down to set yourself up financially to understand that when you're farming, things happen. Look at all the farmers in California and all the different crops and shit that goes on. Cannabis is no different. You know, you're going to fail at times. There's shit that goes on in our rooms that are fucking dialed that problems occur. I don't know a single brand that doesn't deal with problems. Yeah. And if you ain't out there and openly willing to like give out the game on that part of things, don't let these people think you're always winning. It's not happening. Oh, and it's definitely not happening. It's with not everybody. real. It's like Instagram versus real life. Yes. Shit exactly. is not going down like that. You only see the highlights. And I mean, that's it. That's anybody. And I like being real about that too. Telling people like, look, you know, I'm not showing you all the fucked up shit because I don't want to come on here on negative and stuff, but you, you know, that it's doesn't get shared. That doesn't get shared with anybody. Yeah. No. I mean, so, but the humble people and the humble leaders that are leading by example, definitely dig into that because that's how you get your crew and your team to grow around you. It's really like self-discovery through business. I mean, it took, I'm all, I'll put on you. I mean, it took me a year to figure out a full year, a year, people don't understand a year of crops to figure out how to figure out, okay, what the fuck is PM? How do we solve this problem? And where are we going from here? And I just got to the point, you know, when back then to where it took me a year to get past to be like, oh, this is why this happens. And then this is how you fix it. Oh, what the fuck? Like, how did I not understand that your environment controls your crop? Oh, yeah. Also, it also controls problems. Oh, yeah. It also controls botrytis and PM. And it's like, shit, man. Well, number one, then control your environment. If you're not controlling your environment, then you you have a mediocre grow. You can't call fire if it has PM on it. That's where it was for me. It was the environment was the biggest thing for me, bro. Same here, on, man. I was pulling air and pushing air out. That's what had older no heads were telling us. I had no air conditioners. There was no knowledge of mini splits. Open in the doors. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Bro. Open the window. But older guys were telling us to do that. We had, we had a guy. Uh, Pat Gods had a guy that used to tell him, right? Uh, go ahead and open up. We had, uh, grow in a garage. Open, open up the garage door at night. And, and it, it, that's what you have to do every night to air yeah. it out. And we're like, air it out. I mean, this is where uh, you don't want to air nothing out. So, you know, <laughs> throw some indo. Let, let's yeah. say like, uh, where are we at? February, March, you know, right around the end of uh, winter when the air is not too cold outside and I'm pulling in some nice drafts and I get my environment somewhat oh. right. And I have that one run out of the year where I'm oh. like, I do grow fire. Straight up. And then you go to the next run and it's fucking June. <laughs> it's June, July. Your Blown room's up. running 98 degrees. And you're like, my we don't look the same. What's going on? Yeah. And then it just clicks. You're like, environment. Yep. You know, and literally there's been so many rounds of that where I'm like, this sucks. But coming up as a young guy in the early 2000s, there wasn't really books being like, if you don't do your environment. I mean, there was these random little but with a, a half a page environment. And it's more like if you live in the mountain range, you don't know that now you're able to listen to a podcast with you. Listen to any you listen to environment. OK, Bro, shit, you know we, what to solve, like solve these problems. We walked into hydro stores and tried to talk about problems and they gave us these pesticides to spray that. That was straight trash, bro. There you go. You know? Well, they give you a band-aid to fix the problem instead of actually solving the problem. And we didn't know till you know, a couple of years later that no, you're really not supposed to be using this stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, straight just, up. And less is more. And all you got to do is really just control environment, genetics, irrigation, those three things, and you can grow fire. And that's kind of what I'm learning from the guys right now more is just the irrigation side of things. You know what I mean? North Bay is kind of gearing more towards that angle, really teaching me. Craft Farmer has his whole irrigation business going that he's pushing Crushing right now. it. Um, that's doing really well. You guys could go check out Craft Farmer's page and check out all his whip kits and stuff like that. That boy's crushing it. But, man, I feel like I'm one of the last of a dying breed because a lot of my stuff, I'm still hand watering. 
You know what I mean? There's stuff that's definitely yeah. irrigated. All of our big rooms, you know, and all these facilities, most of them are irrigated. I think my facility in Modesto is one of the only hand watering major facilities that I've even walked into. That's and I'm awesome. like thinking these guys are crazy. I'm sure it'll change soon. They just kind of get in online, but uh, yeah, that's still more kind of my style. So when I walked in there, I was like, Oh, you guys are cool. <laughs> you know? I'm looking forward to when you catch your stride with the irrigation and you have it super dialed. I'm looking forward to your opinion on since you've been hand watering so long. And then once you're super dialed with irrigation to then look back and say, what do you think? So what it is for me, it's just going to take, take the time to do it because I'm so caught on if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I agree. You know what I mean? And every time I've seen, I'll take it all the way back to like, it was probably 07. My brother switched from soil to these Rockwell, uh, the four inch cubes with the big slabs underneath. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's like, nah, bro. Like, it's flood and drain. Everyone's saying this is the easy way to go now. We don't got to hand water no more. Hook up these tubes. And I'm looking at this like it looks clean as shit. You it know? does it's look like clean. One of those dope little science hydros. experiment. And uh, that's just how he was. He was so scientific with the plant. And I'm literally like watched the whole harvest go to shit because he just <laughs> saturated them. He never let them dry out. I remember harvesting just this most frosty, smelly, airy we there was you know and we're taking the rock well out of the end and they're just soaked no roots just soaked bro. root rot just and yeah they I couldn't was even just like yeah this is not the way we'll go back to soil right you know so that's where it was for me and then it was like every time i kind of saw it work that way it's failed now i got a couple of homies that are running it with good success so i'm seeing good quality come from it i, I see things but uh, he was halfway there. If he would have had a drip system instead of a flood and drain, I think he would have crushed it. Yeah. He was halfway that just right. had to switch up the feed and process. That boy had, had the dope strains back then. He had like the lemon kush from the bay. Ooh. He had like organic can had one of the nicest OG cuts I've ever seen. It was before like SFV came and watered everything down. For organic us. can. Yeah, it was organic can in Santa Rosa. They were selling this OG clone and it was just like that. Just lemon fuel, bro. Yeah, you know, just gas. And um. It was so nice, but I just felt like SFV came around. That cut got so passed around and my area got so saturated with SFV that I was like, this shit is not for me. You know, I didn't like it anymore. It wasn't just that pungent, gassy nose for me. When something's everywhere, it just gets, no matter how fire it is, yeah, it's it like a song that's out. getting played nonstop. Repeat. Off top. You yeah. just can't keep, you're like, all right, all right, all right. When I was coming up, right, in, in back in Florida, there'd be like six of us and we'd all have the same strain. And once someone got a new strain, it would get passed between all of us. And so when we would come to the table, like we, we'd have UFC fights when the UFC, this is like 2003, four, five, right in that range. And we'd have like six, seven growers sitting in a room and we'd all grow grapefruit, right? Because everyone had the same cut because mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of cuts around. And, and if it was fire, everyone wanted to grow it. Right. So everyone would pull out their grapefruit nug and it would be like who grew fire, who didn't grow fire. You know, it was sign of, some some of the homies would be embarrassed somewhat, you know, and then some of the homies would be like, no, this is what. But after a while, you're like, um this is so fire. It's so played out. I can't smoke any more grapefruit because you're smoking grapefruit. You go to the homie, like, can I get a cup? Oh yeah. It's all grapefruit. Then you go to the homie's house. Oh, he's smoking grapefruit too. And it was just now I would kill for that cut back the grapefruit cut. Look, oh look my what God. But, with the dosi dos, bro. Yep. I mean, when dosi dos first came out, alien labs got it. I got it. That was from the public release that they did. The 18, the, the, pro, the big dosi door nor, NorCal cut? Yeah, the NorCal cut yeah. that he released. He actually released that through Always Be Flowering. They kind of did that. He had a delivery at the time in uh, SF. Oh, I didn't even know that. Wow. Okay, but Always Be Flowering was running that delivery. They did that uh, clone drop. Anyways, Alien Labs representation and the representation that I was able to put out were some of the best representations of dosi do I was able to see on market. We had... The open door at Cookies SF, bro. He was dropping there. I was taking the dosi dose there. It was kind of right as low key was popping off. Um, and bro, it was fire. And then once you see it passed around and see everyone else have their dosi dose on market, you see light green batches that were ran too hot. You see these other batches that are blown out, you know? So that's when the value of a strain and the hype of a strain, the talk of a strain just diminishes and everyone thinks it's trash now. Yeah, because even the good batches are like, eh. Because me and Alien got to move on 
to appease the market and take care of other projects and do things to adapt. And we have to leave that in the dust when honestly, it probably deserves a light or two each round because that plant is fire, bro. I still have it in my garden. I love do I yeah. actually have both of them. I have the 18 and the 22. Yeah. So I, I was, love them both. I was lucky enough to, uh, you know, get Dubs's peanut butter breath and kind of work off that early on. So that's kind of the, where I geared my stuff towards. But if you really want to look at the peanut butter line or name or where it came about in this market today, Dosey Dose was somewhat of the first peanut butter known strain on market. Dosey Dose, therefore, was followed by peanut butter. You're milk. right. I didn't even think about that. No, off top. That's what yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right. Peanut butter cookie. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yep. So then once Romer got it and played with it and made peanut butter breath. And do you know what is peanut butter breath is? Dosey Dose times? Mendo breath M- too. Oh, okay. Wow. Crazy cross. So, um. That made peanut butter breath. And once Dubs got his cut and me and Dubs did a little trade, um, I was probably the first person in California to get peanut butter breath to market. Man, shout out Dubs Garden for making that happen Definitely, and playing a role bro. in that. That boy is super solid. Him and Kaz got some major plays going right now. Hopefully get to the table with those guys soon. I chopped it up with them last night and we'll get something going for the market too. But I can't wait to see these seeds yeah, from you. Yeah, well. bro. So then. I took the peanut butter breath and, you know, me and Dubs really ran that up, to be honest with you. Um, Dubs killed it, bro. Dubs came to market with that Mylar bag. I don't know if you remember that. He was like one of the first ones that I remember really coming to market with the Mylars with the images on it. And he had that Skippy type jar on the peanut butter breath bag. I did used to see, you know, I feel like West Coast Alchemy, I used to see a Skippy thing that he used to put out or so something too. we have that with the PBG4 right now. Boom, that's what we it have was. have a really nice PBG4 logo that he's doing. But bring it back to Dubs, he was really pushing that line. And uh, I saw what he was doing with his marketing and we just kind of linked up, bro. And I was like, bro, like, I got this room of peanut butter breath. I'm going to just shoot them to you, bro, and let you do your thing with them too. So like we was kind of working together with that peanut butter breath, right? And then when uh, the peanut butter gelato project came around, um, was just super dope to have that peanut butter breath kind of worked in, into that line, you know? So different, uh, man. I like it. That's why, too. It's so different. You smoke just, it. You're like, oh, this is different. Just to be able to follow that peanut butter, you know, whole hype thing to be a part of it and yeah. have that go down somewhat history. You know, I don't talk about it that often, but that's kind of the story of how the peanut butter really came to market. Now everybody wants a peanut butter. Yeah. You know? hell and there's yeah. different brands that have done different peanut butter stuff and that's all cool, you know, but that's really history of kind of where it originated and how it came to fruition. That's dope, man. I like what you said too, in the beginning, the peanut butter wave, <laughs> it's everything comes to graphics. And I think of it like, you know, everyone's chasing that peanut butter turp. Like it's just funny. It's such a dope branding and marketing play behind all that, you know? Super fucking cool, bro. That's where it's at. Now you need to have the marketing, but you got to have the flower to back it up. And if you can do those two things, your brand has a good shot of doing something. Yeah. Quality, man. Quality. hundred percent. bro. That. And that's I mean, why we're sitting in two front of two big ass trophies, bro. I mean, honestly, it's been awesome fucking talking about that and going deep. And, and these trophies obviously represent that, you know, oh, fuck yeah, it's man. dope to see some credit where credits do, you know, it's, it's yeah. due and, and for some Solid people smoke. that have Literally been doing up. this shit. Cause the thing about it is for a lot of the smokers and stuff, they don't realize that like most of these people's stories dates back 20 years, 10 to 20 years, minimum, minimum, yeah. you know, some longer. So it's just, it's a, it's a long time to endure to get to this point to now finally get a little bit of credit. And I saw the part, everything was really dope and I'm just happy to see the growth and the normalization of events like this, because now we'll, we'll be able to start getting some real crowds and some proper credit and some really dope events where consumption can, you know, be on site and we can make things happen. So it's super dope, bro. And it's just, you know, there's so many small guys like myself. I mean, bro, I'm half the people there. don't even know me. You know what I mean? And that's okay. You've been low key, man. But that's it. <laughs> I just didn't take that huge marketing approach early on. I really wanted to let the flowers speak for themselves. And now I got two big ass trophies to hold on to that I can kind of like, you know, let speak for me now. From arguably the number one dispensary in SoCal. And that's where I was early on, bro. It was like through the 215 days, 
I had my eyes on Green Wolf as being a premier shop yep. to get my flowers into. Yep, they've yeah, they've been holding down. Hell yeah. And I got to say that they've been holding be it down. Be able to do this and have this event and them take me on, bro. Like, they will forever, I'll forever be thankful to those guys. That team of them, I mean, shout out to those guys. Shout out to Green Wolf. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, they're the LA plug, man. Absolutely. I, I mean, the, one of the first dispensaries I went to out here. Love them. Fuck yeah, man. Shout out Green Wolf. Um, Absolutely. I appreciate you guys reaching out. You know, I seen what you guys did early on. That shit was super dope. I saw the brands that were about to be coming on here and the knowledge people are about to learn from your guys' podcast is about to be impressive. Yeah, this was a good addition right yeah, here. Some, I'm telling you. There, there's some gems and uh, this is definitely one of them, bro. Yeah. This is huge, man. You dropped a lot of game on here. It almost sounded like you knew exactly word for word everything you were going to say before you even came on. <laughs> yeah, Because like, exactly honestly, opposite. we were we were bullshitting around and you pulled up and I was like, damn, long night. Huh? You celebrating because you, you know, you two big wins, you drinking and you're hanging out. You're finally getting out of the house. Get the whole team. You got to celebrate. Yeah, bro. And so and I'm not a drinker. So, it was just yeah, like, Shit, you know, I got to keep my cool. Too. I was like, damn, he's might be tired or something. But then we got in here and I don't talk you just public million like dollars for the game. Turned I it just up. No me i know the game so it's easy for me to talk about that you know it's absolutely easy for me to sit here and roll a drone with you guys and just talk about life the only thing i've known for the last 20 fucking years finally get to talk yeah. about it sure yeah people are Fuck gonna like feels this good bro and i appreciate sharing the moment with you man that's, seriously it's yeah. it's a dope ass story it's an even doper brand and even doper product and that's why you're a standout company. And that's why you got these trophies here on the table right here today. And a team behind you. And a, and a team of 16 people down in L.A. traveling with you. Yeah, bro. We got, supporting. So we that's, got me, you know, shout out to every single one North of them. North Bay Gardens. We got One Life Exotics. We got m and Gardens. And we have Swing the Sword. All of those brands are basically an umbrella of me. And now we have Craft Farmer, more on the rec side, of being able to make my vision come to market, too. So us together, bro, the next year moving forward, everything moving forward with the genetics I have coming. I mean, I got a lot to bring L.A. I got a lot to bring back to the Bay. And that's one thing that, you know, sucks, too. It's like it don't suck because this is great for me, but the Bay ain't seen shit. I dropped Heavy Fog 4 in L.A. <laughs> Damn. I love it. You know, that's got, the Damn. Golden Gate, that's got the Golden Gate Bridge on yeah. it. Yeah. And I've held up on all of them this whole time. They got something so to look forward to. I got something coming from you guys in the Bay for sure. We'll have a heavy fog drop coming in the next month for sure. And uh, I'll take care of you guys out there. Hell yeah, hey, bro. That's dope, man. It's been awesome. That's, that's dope that you did that. And shout out to Greenwood for putting this on because look what they did for LA. Yeah. Um, we got the heavy fog first. Yeah. yeah. And that was <laughs> super dope because, bro, LA has never been able to see my flower like that. So right now it's starting to happen on a pretty consistent basis. And shout out to you guys here in LA for showing me hella love. and. I look forward to hopping on that plane and coming back and forth now, keeping the quality control there and just getting fire flower to market. 100%, oh, yeah. man. You definitely have to fall back through some of the homies, whoever, and uh, we'll touch base again soon on it. We're, I'm, I'm happy to just be enjoying the flowers and finally getting to try it down here, too. So I'll try to uh, do some timing a little better. And when I finish some dope phenos and finish some dope runs, I'll pop up on you guys when I'm in town and drop you <laughs> the new stuff, get you some fresh flower. Let's do a taste test. Let us know. We can curate a little party. Yeah, the whole game is the fresher, the better, baby. You know, that, see, talk <laughs> about that. I always bring that up, man. Like, because, you know, when you get a rec bag, you bring me a rec bag. It's one thing. You bring me that mason jar. It's a whole other thing. It's a lot different. I know. Yeah, nothing's <laughs> fresher, like fresher the better, real baby. Yeah. There's certain things in this market that's totally out of our control. Yeah. But if there's one thing I will say, it's fresher, the better. And for me, I mean, there's just a certain period of when that smoke is so good. And I cringe when I see supporters post a jar from six months ago that I don't care where your jar was stored, bro. That is not the quality of flour represented in my brand at this point. And I wish you wouldn't smoke it, but you guys think it's great. It's cured. It's six month cure or whatever. <laughs> Enjoy your flour. But please, if you can find my flour soon, fresh is smoke better. that shit. Fresh is better, man. Better smoke that shit. Hell yeah. It's way too good to hold on to it. Man, yeah, fresh shout out better. Grow Low Key. Shout out everyone in this podcast. That was a great one. Shout out to Grow Low Key, North Bay Gardens, the whole damn gang, man. Green shit Wolf, Saw Olympics, making this happen. Black Leaf, you already know. Let's go. Hell yeah. Episode 10, man, wrapping up Grow Low Key, Let's man. You already know, keep it lit. Low First smoke out, of the baby. day. Wide Let's ashes. <laughs> <laughs>